Hey guys, as you can see from the last video, we had a system that was running up a real high pressure. That was R22, and then it was tripping off on high head pressure. What I had done, I had come to a doctor's office, and I don't do a whole lot of commercial work anymore. In fact, I do practically none. I just like residential more. But this customer is a foot doctor that is one of my residential customers, and he asked me to come by his office because he said they were having issues and they were perpetual issues that were never solved. They'd have problems, yada, 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 shish, boom, ba. So I got to the doctor's office and I turned the system on and it went out back and there was a York, one of those old brown condensers from the early 2000s and late 90s and early 90s. They've been around for a while. Those little rectangles with the curved uh, fan grill on top. And I saw this three and a half ton heat pump it was running, I hooked up my little gauges to it, and it ran at about a 160, 170 head, and this is on a 75 degree day, and it ran the back pressure of around 50 pounds, which was low. Now the superheat was also in the five to 10 range. So it, it looked like it was not going to be charge related, it was gonna be airflow related. Airflow related or something non-charge, we'll say that. So I went inside and took a look at the air handler, and the air handler was a Bryant air handler from 1996. So it wasn't the same brand, which is sort of, you know, the first red flag. So I checked the tonnage, and it was a three-ton air handler. So a three-ton air handler tells us that that means that the coil is going to be undersized. We're not going to run as much CFM. And somewhere along the line, probably around 2003, someone put in this York unit, I'm guessing to try to get themselves some extra cooling without having to do the hard work of changing the air handler, and it bit them in the ass. Now what happens when you do that sort of thing? In cooling, first of all, the, the orifice for the air handler, because I'm assuming since they're too lazy to change the air handler, they're too lazy to change the orifice at least, the orifice is likely the same orifice that was there originally meaning it's undersized for three and a half tons. So you have an undersized orifice and coil and low airflow. Plus the unit is dirty, all scummy and dirty, full of crap. The returns are undersized, the return duct is undersized for it, even for three tons. Now it might be close, maybe I, I might be wrong about that. It might have been 18, but I think it was a 16, so it was a little bit undersized. And it was flex, so and it was kind of pinched off in the back. Hopefully I got a picture of it. I think I did come out the back of the air handler so it's not real good for airflow anyway. So of course we were running low pressure and low superheat. Classic low airflow indicators. And I knew that the, the, the machine would cool somewhat but it wasn't doing the job at this office. But I wanted to see what would happen if we flipped it into heat. Because these sort of problems when we have low airflow and heat on heat pumps they really show they're really bad. So I flipped it in the heat and immediately I expected to see a high head pressure, which there was. As you can see, it climbed and climbed until it shut off on high head. Now they have a high head switch in that unit and there was, looked like a Goodman defrost board. So someone might've put a Goodman defrost board in it, meaning there's no lockout on it. So it's just gonna go up to high head, should come down, run again, high head, run down. Every few seconds it's gonna shut on and off. Now it's probably a good thing this Goodman defrost board wasn't there forever or the compressor probably would already been toast. The York board having a lockout in it is a good thing in this situation. It's, it helps you when your installers are morons. Because they ended up putting this big unit in here and, and I'm sure the idea was the bigger the better. We won't change the air handler, it's just half a ton, but it makes a world of difference. And heat, it makes a huge difference in heat pumps. So there's not much I can do with that besides tell them to rip it all out. I told them, and I went to talk to the lady up front. And I told her, I said, well, you know, I'd love to, what I'd love to do is come back in here and I'll draw up the building and we'll do a commercial load calculation. Because most of my load calculations were based on manual N, which is commercial load calculation. So I said, I'd draw the building up, but I wanted to make sure before I did that, I wasn't going to do that today because I want to make sure they were serious about it because the doctor had left. Uh, they have a 50-50 co-op on his lease. So I want to make sure before you do too much work that they're actually going to, you know, do something about it. 
So I'm going to write it up tonight and I'll put my forms together and tell them all the things that are wrong from the small things, which is a weak capacitor, dirty coils, all the way up to the big thing, which is the mismatch, which is really the death knell. The system can't be saved with a repair. Or you can go to great lengths to try to alleviate it a little bit, maybe putting TXVs on both ends, but it's in heat, I don't think you're going to save it either way. I think the TXV might help in cooling a little bit, but in heat, I, I think it's pretty much done. So that's what the video was, guys. I wanted to make a short blog about this high head pressure mismatch. Not the same as mismatching a larger coil to an air conditioner, a larger coil to a heat pump, because they do that on purpose for efficiency. That's a whole different debate. I've seen talk about it online on the Talon 875 Pro group on Facebook about compression ratio, which does change. When you enlarge your coil, you'll get a lower compression ratio, more efficiency, but you're, you lose in other areas. And that was the debate going on over there. If any of you guys wanna join a Talon 875 Pro group, it's not like the Pro Channel, you don't have to pay, obviously, to be in a Facebook group. So if you wanna join it, just friend me on Facebook, it's Talon. Zach Ciotta on Facebook and then you just have a friend request and shoot me a message say you want to be part of the group and I'll bring you into the group. We have pretty good discussions. Uh, I'm in three groups on Facebook. I mean that group and the YouTube uh, the YouTube group. Rob made a group over there just like the Google Plus group but put it on Facebook and the HVAC owners group which is real good too for networking. So I'm heading home now, guys. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna write this stuff up and see if the doctors actually wanna do something. I know that they do, because all the nurses are pissed, and doctors hate that, because all the nurses had this look on their face when I arrived, like, oh, thank God, you're here. You know, like, they spent the last five years in 80 degree summers, but, which they probably have, or at least been somewhat uncomfortable. But, all right, guys, that's it for this vlog, and 